In this video, we're going to look at Sakai's tests and quizzes. And in this video, we're going to get started with a tester quiz from scratch, how you create that using the built-in tools. So if you don't have the tests and quizzes tool in your Sakai site, you can add that under Site Info, and then at the top, Edit Tools. And they're in alphabetical order, so you would just choose Tests and Quizzes and hit Continue. Of course, mine is already on, so let me go to Tests and Quizzes. And I did set up a small sample quiz before, and you can see this here in my working copies. Now there's two tabs at the bottom. One is your working copies, and you can see here these are not released to students. These are for you to work on and continue to edit and modify until they're done. And when they're done, in the settings, you'll publish that. Once it's published, it will go over here to published copies. These are the ones that the students can see. And at any time, you can enter the student view or the access view. And you can see that right now I don't have any available assessments because none of my quizzes are published. So to get started with a new quiz, you just need to give it a title. I'm going to call this Quiz 2. And you can use the Assessment Builder or you can use Markup Text, which we'll go over in the next video. Or you could import. Um, so if you've exported some quizzes from another site and need to import those, you would do that here. You can also choose what kind of assessment it is if you want, but it doesn't really matter. This is just um, for you, but I'm just going to leave that blank for now and hit Create. So the first thing that you see are adding parts and adding questions. So if you have a really long test, you could add multiple parts, part one, part two, part three, or you can just start adding questions. So I'm going to add a question and I'm going to start with multiple choice. Once you've selected multiple choice, you need to give it some more information. So the first is the answer point value. And let's say that this question is going to be worth five points. Then you have the option of a single correct. So if it's A through E, just one of those is correct. Um, multiple correct, single selection, or multiple correct, multiple selection. So choose whatever you want. Obviously, this is the most common, is that there's one correct answer. Okay. So the question text, and I have a sample question that I got from the internet that I'm going to use for this, so I can just copy paste. So who's widely considered the father of modern epidemiology? All right, and then here are your correct answer fields. So I'm going to put in the answers here. Obviously you could type in here, but because I have this in another document, I'm just going to copy paste. Now this is pretty typical. I have four answers, but you can also insert additional answers and you could have up to six more. So you could make this a really long selection. Before moving on, make sure that you choose which answer is correct. And then the next area asks if you want to randomize the answers. And I think that this is a good idea. So maybe one person has a list in this order. The next person, they'll be jumbled up. So maybe C will be A and so forth. Just if you're going to do this, make sure that your last answer doesn't say something like all of the above, because your all of the above could end up at the top. So you could say all the answers are correct or something like that. Or if you like the all of the above, then don't randomize the answers. Just keep them in the order that they are. The require rationale will bring up an additional text box below the question that will require the students to type in some text on why they chose that particular answer. Now, if we had more than one part, we could assign this question to a different part, but we just have this one. Um, in addition, you can assign questions to question pools. So we're going to be going over question pools in a, a different video. But if you're making one, you can go ahead and add to that pool. The last part of the multiple choice question has an option for giving feedback if someone gets a correct answer. And this sample quiz that I found does have feedback. So I can just copy paste there 
um, and I could do the same for the incorrect answer. So basically letting them know if they got that question right or not. And when you're done, just hit save. And that will bump you back to the window. It shows you that you have this first question in here. So it has the question, the right answer, um, and the feedback. So from here, you can enter the next question type. So under the select a question type, and it's both at the top and bottom, it doesn't matter which one you use, there are some different options. We just looked at the multiple choice. There's a survey, and this does not have a right or wrong answer. This is a typical survey question. So put the question text in, and then there are different answer arrays. So it could be just a yes, no, or it could be a strongly disagree to strongly agree type of Likert scale. There are also some other ones like 1 to 5 or 1 to 10. Um, again, you're not checking a correct answer. This is just for a survey. So I'm going to hit cancel there. Similarly, there's a matrix of choices survey. And it has an example here that shows you you can put multiple row and column choices. And then um, the survey, you can either limit it to choosing one per column, or people can choose as many as they want. And so again, those are not gradable questions. Those are more for opinions. The next one is the short answer essay, which is used quite often in online tests and quizzes. And you could put in your question text here. And if you want, provide a model short answer and or feedback. But otherwise, they just have a text box to type into. Um, that answers your question. Of course, these are not graded by the computer. You'll have to go in and grade these yourself. Another type of question that's available is fill in the blank. And there are some really good examples on how to do this. So the example of roses are, and in the brackets are red. So that's going to show up as a, as a blank, but that's the correct answer. And violets are blue. And there are some examples if you have exceptions, multiple spellings, and so forth and some other options for making it case sensitive and so on. And this is graded by the computer. In addition, there is numeric response. These are really for numeric answers, so any kind of math questions and so forth. And again, there are some great examples on the types of questions and answers that you can get the system to do for you. So if you have those types of questions, look over this and see if that's going to meet your needs. There are matching, true false. There's the ability for students to upload an audio recording or upload a file. And also, you could copy some questions from a question pool. So make your quiz, put as many questions in it as you want. If you forget to fill out the points, which is common, you can always go in here and fill them out. If you need to edit one of these questions, the column is here on the right to edit it. You can also remove questions if you want. So keep adding questions to your quiz, and you can come in and out and do this as much as you like. To get back to the main test and quizzes screen, you click these little double blue arrows at the top. And so if you have left or left for the day and want to come back the next day and add more questions, beside the quiz that you want to edit, pull down the select action and hit edit. And that'll get you right back to the screen where you can, again, choose a question type and add more questions um, as you go along.